YouTube, what's going on? It is time to talk about Iron Man Florida and if I was able to break the 10 hour Iron Man that I wanted to. It was a brutal day. Let's get to the video. Doctor by day, triathlete by night. He doesn't need water. He's an animal. Okay, so let me tell you, well, before we get started, I want you to know that you are greatly, greatly loved and that you're wonderfully and beautifully created and that you are capable of far more than you could ever imagine. All right, so to start off with, I did 24 weeks of training. I worked my butt off while working full time as a doctor in the ICU for part of it during COVID, doing all this, trying to break a 10 hour Ironman because that was my goal because I knew if I broke a 10 hour Ironman, the chance of me qualifying for the world championship would be very, very high. And that was the goal. So that's what I wanted to do. Well, let's get to it. Based off of my training, I had a good chance of breaking 10 hours. I had done 100 plus mile rides. Uh, my biggest session was 129 miles and an eight mile run after that. And I averaged 21.6 miles per hour at about 188 watts uh, for that 129 miles. And then the eight miles afterwards, I was able to run like at a 7.30 pace. So just in those two uh, categories, I felt very strong. Swimming, I wasn't the strongest at, but I really wanted to try to hit the hour and 10 minute mark for the swim. So the goals, the goals was an hour 10 for the swim or lower, a 5.15 or lower for the bike, and then a 3.25 or lower for the run and then have very fast transitions and it would get me right around that 10 hour mark. So then let's go to the week of the race. So in Florida, it was crazy nice the whole week. So in residency, we get three vacations a year. I took a vacation to do this Ironman. So we went there a week early, spent the whole week there and then the race was on Saturday. I honestly didn't feel the greatest uh, most of the week and then come race day didn't really feel the greatest either I honestly when I woke up I was like I just do not I didn't have any energy I was really fatigued I was like and I had a great taper I just think I was getting a little under the weather but go to the starting line and I did not even want to begin it was so cold I was like freezing it was like 46 degrees I think the morning of uh, the race and so I was freezing to death I did a sleeveless a uh, wetsuit because I like the like mobility. And so with that, uh, when we were walking on the beach to start, it was just like the sand was cold. I was freezing, didn't wear throwaway clothes. So I was like starting to shiver. And I was like, I have to fix this. I cannot be shivering before the race. And I saw the donation bag and I went up there. I was like, hey, is there any way I could use some of that those clothes just until I start and they let me. So I put on a sweater, I put on uh, socks, I put on gloves and I put on a beanie up until the start of the swim. So then the swim start. The swim, I start off and I am flying. My first 500 meters was sub 730, which would put me on pace to break a 60 minute swim. And I was absolutely pumped. My next 500 was a sub eight minute. So I was still on pace to break that hour swim. Well, then the course, you take a right turn on uh, for a turn buoy. As soon as I took that turn, waves hit me right in the face. It was crazy windy. There was terrible currents and it was a nightmare. My next 500 meters was 14 or 15 minutes and I was swimming literally as hard as I could and barely moving at all. When the current would let up, I would get more uh, distance, but it was just like crazy hard. So doing everything I could to get to that next turn buoy. When I finally got there, I it was another right turn and then going back to shore, um, there was like these orange siding buoys that at the athlete briefing, we were told you have to keep all buoys on your right. I repeat, you have to keep all buoys on your right. Well, no one else was doing that. Everyone was going inside these buoys and going straight to the shoreline, which I guess technically you set rules that is allowed. Um, but that's not what they said at the athlete briefing. Anyway, so I went all the way to the drifted off uh, siding buoys, went around them and finally made it to the shore. This was a two loop course. Talk about demoralizing. So my first lap was 42 minutes. So much slower 
than I thought it would be. So I was I was devastated. I this the 10 hour goal that I wanted was slipping away and I had to do that terrible swim again. So the first thousand meters again, crazy fast, but when I took that right turn again, it was terrible. And this time I went through a swarm of jellyfish. A jellyfish stung me right on the nose and my eyes started to water so much that it filled up my goggles. It wasn't from the waves coming in, it was literally because I was crying or my eyes were watering that it filled up my goggles and I had to stop and let the water out. Then a rescue boat stopped the swimmers and saved someone literally right in front of me from drowning. So that was demoralizing. And then I was like, okay, I've got to get out of this water. I don't know if I'm gonna survive. I think I'm gonna drown, I gotta get out. So I just pushed as hard as I could um, and finally got out of the water and it took me an hour and a 33 minute swim. So 23 minutes slower than what I wanted to do. But given all the pros swam about 15 minutes slower, uh, the pros, actually Heather Jackson, um, who won the race, said this was the hardest triathlon that she's ever done and definitely the hardest swim. Uh, Lionel Sanders said the same thing. So I was okay with that. Moving on, transition one was very quick, or about four minutes, got on my bike. As soon as I get up to the mounting line on my bike, my chain fell off my bike. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Um, put it back on really quick and then took off on the bike. The first 60 miles on the bike was straight into a headwind. I my goal was to average between 190 to 200 watts throughout the whole thing. I was pushing 225 watts and only going 17 miles an hour, 18 miles an hour for the first 60 miles. And that was not the plan, but that's what I had to do. But then thankfully the last 52 miles, the wind was out of your back and you literally just flew 25, 26, 27 miles an hour coming back. So I was able to average 21.2, I think, or 21.3 miles an hour and finish the bike with a 518, still slower than what I wanted. But my watts, I averaged 200 102 watts for the entire course of the bike and only averaged 21.2. And on my training rides, I averaged about 188 watts and was going about 21.6, 21.8 uh, miles per hour. So definitely the headwind and the wind of the course made it a little bit harder, so I didn't go quite as fast. But either way, I didn't feel good at all on the bike, but I was able to still do about on par with what I wanted. Uh, going into transition two, um, I did have a little bit of GI distress, not too bad, so used the bathroom, got changed up really quick, and then took off on the run. My plan for the run was to average, do a nine minute mile for the first mile, then an 8.30, then go eight, and stay at eight until mile 13. Hey, you're, if I felt listen, good, I'd go faster until 18. If I felt good, I'd go faster to 22, and then I'd go as hard as I could. What actually happened is my first mile was about a 7.45, and then I stayed at between a 7.30 and eight minute mile up till mile seven, and I was feeling really good, but then when I turned around, I hit a bunch of wind and I was like, oh no, no wonder I was feeling good. The wind was at my back and now it's in my face. And then six to 13 was around eight to 820. And then I was like, you know what? I don't feel good at all. I just need to finish this thing. Um, and so I took the eight, uh, just did whatever I could for the rest of the race essentially. Um, ended up running a 338 marathon. So again, slower than what I wanted in my in time was a 10 hour and 44 minute Ironman. Put it together for Tommy Martin from Little Rock, Arkansas. Let's go Tommy! I think he's the most incredible little boy in the world. Way to go dad, Tommy you are an Ironman. Then my goal, which kind of ruined the chances of qualifying for the world championships, Definitely upset about that, but given the conditions and how I felt that day, and it was an hour and 20 minute PR, I was very, very happy, but not satisfied with the results of it, okay? And so with this, um, some good things that came with this. I've said a lot of negative things, but some good things. 
One would, would be that despite feeling terrible, despite, despite wanting to quit before even starting, I was able to stay positive during the race and I think lift up a lot of people around me, which I'd say is a huge positive. Number two, absolutely zero cramping and very little GI distress. So I nailed my nutrition, nailed my electrolytes, nailed my carb loading and carbohydrates. So I was very happy about that. And number three, I PR'd by a ton. Okay, so that was really great. I ended up finishing 12th in my age group. Um, and then so I, after the race, uh, my beautiful wife was there and Oliver was there. So I got to see them a ton and they were a huge motivation for me. So that was awesome. And then I met a lot of people that knew me from social media that came and cheered me on. So that was a huge plus as well. And then I got a message from a coach that said, Tommy, look, um, you should go to the award ceremony. I don't know if you'll get a slot or not, but you don't want to miss out. I was like, man, I finished 12th. I really don't know if I should go. I don't know if I'll get a slot. Well, I went to the award ceremony. They had five slots for the world championship in my age group. Two going to Kona, three going to St. George's, Utah. I was 12. So the chance of me getting it was extremely slim. Well, by the grace of God, somehow, some way, I received the last slot to go to St. George's, Utah, the world championships. So even though I didn't break 10 hours, I still reached my goal of qualifying for the Ironman world championships. So all in all, it was a crazy awesome result, but a terrible day, but we were able to find joy in suffering and finish strong anyway. So right now we have to get prepared for May 7th, where we will be competing for or at the Ironman World Championships. And of course the goal will be to break a 10 hour Ironman. So we have a lot, a lot of work to do. Anyway, I wanna say thank you to every single one of you for your love, for your support. Uh, it's been an awesome journey. These 24 weeks were long, um, but we got it done. Well, we got the goal of qualifying done, but not the 10 hours. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the race recap and make sure, make sure that if you enjoyed the video, that you subscribe to my channel, that you like and comment below with any questions that you have whatsoever. I would love to answer them for you. And until next time, I want you to know that you are greatly, greatly loved and that you're wonderfully and beautifully created and that you are capable of far more than you could ever imagine. Good night, guys.